Now bear with me on this one. Regular listeners, viewers, readers will know that I've been very happy with the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus. It's the Samsung smartphone with all the bells and whistles before Samsung went all retro and started removing things. That's one of my SIM cards. The other one has been in the iPhone 11 Pro, shooting this by the way and shooting the main phone show for quite a while. It's still a bit of a technological miracle how the battery lasts me for two days on a charge and how the speakers sound so well. Incredible, bit of an acoustic miracle. But this isn't an iFan video about how iOS is better than Android. I'm still ambivalent about operating system heck. I was using Windows 10 Mobile not so very long ago. This video is about hardware and imaging in particular. Samsung have kind of messed up their imaging over the last few years with edge enhancing everything to within an inch of destruction. And I want something slightly more restrained. And I also want better hardware all round in terms of perfection. I've been pretty vocal about the disadvantages and advantages of folded lenses, periscope lenses too. They're great for getting into wildlife shots, um, ornithology, seeing things really close up. But once you start using them in real life, uh, going below their periscope limit, you have all sorts of problems. Use the camera UI to zoom out that little bit more to get more in the frame and you are unceremoniously booted out to the main lens and blocky digital zoom. In the case of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra with its giant 108 megapixel camera, two times zoom is lossless, three times is almost lossless, but still three times to 4.9 times zoom is blocky and unsatisfying. If you're going to have a five times periscopes camera, you'd also need a three times optical to fill the gap. And I think this will happen on some flagships. Because for 99% of the photos and videos that you and I take, a five times zoom just isn't needed. A 0.5 times, so wide angle to two times optical, so a four times zoom overall. That range, that is suitable for 99% of your test subjects. Taking shots of friends, family, pets, landscapes, arty macros, whatever you can think of. For 99% of shots, you do not need a periscope folded five times lens. At which point I wanted to go into some reasons why the iPhone 11 Pro has impressed me so much with its imaging that it's kept me going for 12 months, which is almost unheard of in Steve Litchfield land. The three cameras inside are mounted in a single physical block, i.e. they can't move relative to each other. They're aligned at the factory so that their optical centres are as close as possible and they're colour calibrated there too. They're all at the same resolution, 12 megapixels. They're all exactly scaled in terms of focal length. The main is 26 millimetres, twice that of the ultra wide, and the telephoto is 52 millimetres, twice that of the main. What all of this means is that you can treat the three cameras as one with impunity. You can go from 0.5 times zoom to two times, either four times zoom range, and everything will just work. The maths is kept nice and simple because of the resolution and the matching, and there is minimal jarring in terms of white balance and focus and alignment of the center of the optics. Everything just works, everything's just smooth. Just a zoom test in video mode. One times, 1.5, two times switching to the optical. This is software zoom, smart cropping on the optical sensor. This is now six times video on the iPhone 11 Pro. Should be pretty stable and pretty good quality. Six times, who needs periscope? Uh, and with the Lumia-esque scroll wheel, you can then go back down smoothly and even go all the way to the wide angle. Now what else? The main camera has 100% focus pixels, so autofocus is insanely fast. And the image processing is much more strained. Think a Lumia-esque back in the day. Something quite intelligent. You give enough pop to your images without things seeming too artificial when you look closely. Then as with many modern phones, you get the multi-exposure combination for extra high dynamic range. You also get the facility where you get an extra photograph taken on the wide angle as well as the main, so that if you're taking a shot and, for example, you chop off the edge of a building or, heaven forbid, someone's arm, you can later on go back and just widen the frame and it uses part of the wide angle shot to let you expand outside the frame and give you a shot with everything in. It's really quite clever. Also Lumia-esque is the ability to reframe later, as Nokia used to call it. You can crop into a photograph on your iPhone 11 Pro, send it out, share it, then later on think, well, I didn't want that crop, I wanted a different crop. So you simply 
adjust the crop. And the original image is there behind the scenes to let you do that. You could even go all the way out and keep and save the original image. Another Lumia-esque touch is that when zooming in stills or video mode, you get a zoom wheel in the UI, making the most of the smooth, multi-aligned lens zoom integration. So what else? Well, Apple did night mode, I would argue, better than anybody else. Yes, Google and Huawei did it first, but Apple did it best. It comes on automatically, and if the light levels are low enough that it's needed, you can see a little yellow indicator, and it shows you how long to stay still for, and all the magic works behind the scenes. There's literally no extra user involvement, no taps, no swipes, needed. Finally, a shout out to Apple for doing portrait mode better than anybody else. I think Apple did it first using information from the telephoto and main lens to utterly blur around people to give a really separated effect. Other phones try and do it with a wide angle and mains and you have to be right up in front of someone's face and then they get a bigger nose so it doesn't work quite as well. I'm not trying to say that everyone should rush out and get an iPhone 11 Pro or I guess 12 in a month or so's time. What I am saying is that I wanted to acknowledge what Apple did right on this device all those months ago and they've kept me loyal as a result. I've been thinking about doing this video for months, I really have. I'm glad I finally squeezed it in. There are lessons here for other foam manufacturers to learn. It's not all about Apple, but sometimes they do just do it right.